Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of uh, 434 to 436 for the 3rd to the 5th of May. And uh, for those that uh, happened to be watching on YouTube, this is a delayed telecast because uh, the SIGBRAP are classified uh, for paying members of the DPA Army, for the DPA sergeants, officers and generals, uh, they will get first access um, and then because I want to make sure that uh, the SIPRAP continues to be archived in a way that uh, is accessible uh, in the future for people who want to look back, which is why I will still upload all the SIPRAPs uh, back onto YouTube, and uh, but delay. I'm not sure how many days delay I want to do that, maybe one week, maybe a seven days delay. And uh, so the SIP reps, the, the, there's already three SIP reps, I believe, uh, that is already uploaded uh, onto Patreon, Locals, and uh, Coffee.com, and uh, all behind the paywall. And this will be, um, uh, the three will be also uploaded. But I, of course, did not mention this. Uh, so, no, the first three is going to confuse the hell out of the YouTuber, uh, YouTube viewers, uh, because it's like, why the hell is this report so late? No, but yeah so in case you are watching uh, now you know so uh and for those that are supported uh dpa with your hard earned money i have to say thank you very much and uh as, as you can see uh yeah yeah there's a list of the names uh over there uh which is you know how i try to you know highlight and uh, thank everyone who actually uh, contributed to help and uh so Let's start off. Let me turn off the steam. Uh, steam, steam. That's it. So let let's start off with uh, some significant uh, things that had happened uh, beyond the front line. So the there was a alleged there's a drone strike allegedly Ukrainian uh, happened at the Kremlin. Uh, the drone did not really hit anything per se. It kind of uh, flew over the flagpole and then it exploded. It might be attempted. Uh, an attempt to destroy the Russian flag or to take down the flag or destroy the pole uh, ahead of the victory day. So that could be the case. And uh, on the same day, there is also another drone strike that happened over at the Sescha Air Base. So this, this is a very peculiar looking uh, circular air base. Uh, it's very, very cool. Uh, apparently, uh, many of these planes are actually uh, defunct. I, will, I, I, I read that it, it's not really uh, operational. Uh, there's some damage to them. Uh, not because of the drone strike, but it's because of this repair. So anyway, uh, the, the drones have uh, came here and uh, there's no casualties. Only uh, one of these uh, transport, transport plane actually received uh, some minor damage, uh, according to the pro-Russian source. And... Uh, and the drone strike, uh, because it was attacking the Kremlin, so it, it, it got a lot of uh, issues and coverage. And this, however, is uh, not... Let me see, I did not... Did I put it here? No. So I put it actually in the headlines. Uh, so um, Zelensky actually refused uh, to admit that this is actually Ukrainian. The drone is, to them is actually not Ukrainian. So... Yeah, so that's the case. And talking about drones, uh, a Beretta TB2 was shot down over Kiev by the Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian air defense. And uh, apparently, they are not sure. Uh, so according to official air force, uh, the Ukrainian air force statement, they're talking about. They say that they actually lost control of the UAV, and uh, the U so the plane the UAV just circles around the capital and then they shoot it down. Uh, so this is a technical malfunction and uh, they try to establish why is it they say that uh, this uh, is a pt but this is how they have to take down the drone which i thought is a bit weird you might as well let just let it crash you don't have to shoot it down and waste bullets and missiles but yeah so that happens and uh so it, it was celebrated by the pro-ukrainian side thinking that they, are sh they shoot down a russian drones and then uh, the pro-russian side started to ID as a TB2, a uh, Beretta drone, and eventually it was confirmed uh, by the Air Force that it is a drone. And then interestingly, the Ukrainians over the past, uh, within the next past 12 hours, actually claimed to have shot down a Kinzhal, uh, the hypersonic missile. Apparently, this is actually uh, shot down by a Patriot 
uh, service to air missile system and uh, so the Patriot have this uh, kinetic uh, interception means and uh, somehow they seem to have shot down uh, Tinzel. So that is actually pretty significant because this will actually give the Western power, especially NATO forces uh, and, the NATO, uh, and the US forces uh, something to feel glad about because the hypersonic missiles is supposedly nearly impossible to intercept. So they managed to intercept this. So this is actually pretty significant. So, but the question would be, what is the target of the Kinzao? That would be very interesting to know. Why is there a Kinzao flying over uh, somewhere uh, in Kiev? So wonder what's the target. So, um, and uh, in another news, JDAMs, uh, JDAM guided bombs are now being used by the Ukrainian Air Force. Uh, so this is part of the Russian Defense Ministry report. Uh, on the 3rd of May, they mentioned the use of JDAMs. They intercepted one JDAM. And also another thing about HIMARS. So the Russian Defense Ministry always uh, mentioned about the interception of a number of HIMARS missiles. So according to one of the HIMARS footage that I saw, they actually launched quite a number of missiles. And based on my daily reading, it seems like there are a lot of HIMARS uh, strikes that actually was successful. So despite there is uh, information about the air defense taking down HIMARS missiles, uh, they don't really take down uh, most of it. I think most of the HIMARS strikes were still successful. But this is just my feeling. And uh, so moving on, uh, over at the Transnistria border region, uh, there is information coming from the pro-Russian sources talking about the get there is some build up of Ukrainian forces over the border region. So this does not happen like overnight kind of thing. It's like there has been uh, building up the forces. So one one major force is near Kobasna. Kobasna is actually uh, this town here with uh, the Soviet era uh, warehouses of the all these uh, Soviet era munitions and everything. So there's so this one of the target if the Ukrainians do enter into Transnistria, and uh, they, according to the report, they also say that um, there is a lot of this uh, NATO uh, reconnaissance and uh, planes flying around this region here, uh, around Romania. I don't think they are inside Moldova. So, and then uh, there is another force actually near further in the south, uh, closer towards uh, Tiraspol, which is the capital of uh, Transnistria. So. So in the case where they actually go to war into Transnistria, that will be the target. So, uh, so this is uh, just something to take note because if the Ukrainians do launch an attack into Transnistria, uh, which is actually possible, uh, but I don't think the Russians can do anything about it. Uh, and then uh, on another news in the southern France. So in the southern France at Odessa, leopard tanks has been spotted on trains in Odessa. So. Uh, the, the geolocation is actually along is along this railway here uh, and then uh, so the the tanks are all on the train so it's probably it's going to be transported somewhere uh, but for it to be actually this far south suggests that it's likely to be transported probably within the Kherson uh, life region but I might be wrong they may actually go all the way to Kaibi Ray and then go into Zafrisia that could also be possible but that also shows that there is still a significant amount of uh, these NATO equipped forces they are still not at yet not yet at the front line yet since they are still at Odessa. So moving on to the uh Mikolaev region, let's see did I miss anything? No. So uh there is no there's no updates uh other than uh there is a Ukrainian Sukhoi twenty five shot down over uh Tia 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 Hinka <laughs> Yeah Tia Hinka uh on uh, on the 5th of May and then there's another Sukhoi 25 shot down over Zalata Bauka so there's these two are uh, getting shot down over here let me pause a while yeah so I, I just want to bring up these uh, arrows so um and then um, over to the Zaporizhia region so at the Zaporizhia region you have noticed there's a lot of pimples around here these all these human uh, icons is actually the locations being mentioned that the civilians will be evacuated by the Russian forces. The Russian forces have announced a mass civilian evacuation of Zaporizhia region, particularly actually in the northern half, 
uh, northern half of the Zaporizhia region occupied by the Russian forces. So they are bringing them somewhere else. I'm not even sure that they will still stay within the Zaporizhia region. They might actually be evacuated further away into Crimea or into Russia itself. So this is actually in preparation of the uh, Ukrainian uh, offensive that might they, they will be you know coming into Zaporizhia and uh, with this evacuation this they might seem that the Russians might not have the confidence to hold the first or second line of defense uh, so this this uh, comes along with uh, shelling at Kayamske the Novo Danilivka on two days 4th and the 5th and uh, at Malatakmashka at Huyaipo at Shevene, uh Shavone on both days, 4th and the 5th at Malinivka, and as well as uh, shelling at Temirivka and Velika Novosilka. And uh, if you can see this amount of shelling, and this coincide with another information, which is the uh, Ukrainians' uh, reinforcement has been reported at Frykorivka, Shabaki further again. Uh, there's re more reinforcement into Shabaki, and then there is a uh, reinforcement at Merne and at Porovsky. So this is actually a uh, that this build up of uh, Ukrainian forces with into the Zaporizhia region uh, is tremendous. There's a lot of pressure now, you no know, building up in this area here, and uh, the Ukrainians actually did launch an attack. Uh, in a way, they call it a reconnaissance and force. Uh, from my understanding, it seems to be uh, over a hundred, over a hundred soldiers. Uh, and this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. So, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, uh. So this attack has not su been successful and uh, the the losses being mentioned doesn't sound like a lot, uh, just one car and, uh, and a few soldiers. But this attack uh, is just a probe. They want, they want to see where the Russians will be, how the Russians will be reacting. And uh, this is still not the main attack just yet. As we have uh, reported a lot of Ukrainian build up around this region. Uh, in this area as well, in this area as well. So, uh, we definitely have not seen the real, uh, the main count, uh, main offensive operation uh, being uh, done just yet. The Ukrainians are still forming up, and the Russians are taking precautions now uh, with the evacuation of the Ukrainians away, uh, away from uh, the front lines. Definitely, it's not just this location that is mentioned, but definitely all the small towns and villages around they likely will be evacuated, but the name, the main towns and cities are being mentioned. And uh, I did uh, the quick update uh, on this thing, and uh, do check it out in the DPA main channel. So moving into the Donetsk front, uh, at the Voleda region, the Ukrainians launched their offensive at the Voleda region. Fighting is reported uh, at Pavlivka on the 4th, and as well as the Mikulski Dacha on the 4th. This is actually the the, third, the fourth attack um, onto these U Russian positions uh, south of uh, Voleda, Epilivka, and the Dachas of Mikulski. And then on the next day, the Ukrainians attacked Mikulski from the northeast and the northwest. Uh, I think this, I put the wrong one. This is actually should be the northwest of Mikulski. So uh, this information is also, also coming from the pro Russian source Raiba with the Ukrainian attack in two different directions. And uh, so this seemingly also have not worked out uh, but you can see that this attacks is a indication of what might to come like i said uh, Polivka, uh and uh, mikhilsky is a primary target a primary military objective for the ukrainians to actually extend their defense line to this point so that they they have some buffer for voleda which is actually their uh used to be operating as a forward operating base so uh currently is in devastation um because the Russians has been shelling it very badly and uh, the shelling is actually continuing as the Russian Defense Ministry reported shelling at Voleda on the 3rd, 4th and on the 5th. So this this entire region here continues to be uh, one hell of a place for the Russians to cons consistently uh, bombard it. And bombardment also extends to Vodian. So uh, on the 4th and the 5th, uh, the Russian Defense Ministry reported shelling over at the Vodian region. Reinforcement has arrived at Konstantinivka, according to Raiba, the Russian source. Uh, basically, it's a tank battalion uh, being trans uh, moved into this er into Konstantinivka. And uh, fighting is reported at uh, Novo Mihailivka. On the 5th, the Ukrainians are reportedly attacking. Uh, 
the Russian positions. Uh, however, uh, on the third, it was actually uh, the Russians that was uh, doing the attack. So, so some exchange of uh, actions uh, within this area here. Over at the Marinka region, uh, the fighting goes on. Uh, on the third of May, uh, the fighting was actually reported uh, that the Russians are attacking. However, Raiba reported that the Ukrainians actually tried to counter attack with their airborne forces. Uh, but mostly, the the tide of war over this area is mainly uh, on the Russian side. The Russians are the one attacking. Third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, the R Ukrainian Defense Ministry consistently reported that the Russians are attacking. Reinforcement has re has been reported at Marinka on the third, according to Raiba. Uh, this time round, uh, the reinforcement is French mercenaries uh, being deployed to Marinka to uh, strengthen their defense line against the Russian uh, onslaught. So, moving on um, into the Adyevka front. At the Adyevka front, uh, things got relatively quiet. Uh, the Russians reportedly tried to attack towards uh, Zhivane, um on the 3rd. This is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. After that, there was nothing. Uh, same thing uh, for for the report on the 5th of May. Uh, they said there are some operations in the area of ADFK, but they did not mention uh, uh, into details what is this uh, operation is or at which exact location. Uh, and the fighting is reported over at uh, Novo Karinove or on the western part of Novo Bakhmutivka with the Russian Defense Ministry reported the Ukrainians actually tried to attack or counter-attack around this area here. However, on the, by the 5th, the Russians are the one on the offensive again. So, so far, uh, this is still pretty much a stalemate, I would say, uh, in this area here at the Adyevka. Interestingly, there is the beginning, might be the beginning or may, it may actually just be uh, diversionary fighting is reported towards New York according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry this happened on the 3rd of May and by the 5th of May they continue to report that there is a offensive operation in the direction of New York where this offensive operation comes from is pretty unknown I'm not sure if the Russians attack from, uh, attacks from uh, this area or is it coming from the south um, not exactly sure most likely it's coming from the south though through uh, Urivka towards New York uh, because this is a massive defensive uh, line for the Ukrainians and uh, the one below was actually broke through by the Russians so so unlikely that they will come in from here uh, but for illustrative purpose I'll just put it here uh, so that it doesn't look like you know the fighting is actually at Novo Salivka and uh, moving on from the New York front uh, we go into the Bakhmut front at the Bakhmut front um, the Russian forces currently are stuck. Uh, they did not have any advancement over the past three days. Fighting is reported over in the, along the street of the uh, Vers uh Donbasu, uh, which is actually uh, this street over here. This is they are still fighting along uh, this area here, and uh, the other. So other than this part, that is the fighting is ongoing. The other part is actually along the Chaikovskogo uh, street. Which is actually uh, this street over here. They are fighting along the street currently, and uh, the the previous uh, breakthrough that was around here was actually wiped out by the Ukrainians. With the Ukrainian counter attack uh, managed to recapture these grounds. Uh, there is dual location of uh, Russian, uh, sorry, Ukrainian tanks attacking the uh, the Russian forces that is hiding within these buildings here. So, so the Ukrainians definitely have uh, retaken this area here. Uh, they are still trying to hold back the Russian forces uh, at Bakhmut city. Uh, so nothing much within the city itself. Uh, Prigozhin reported that the Wagner forces are due to losses, high losses and uh, insufficient uh, ammo and shells being provided to them. They will be uh, rotating out of Bakhmut uh, on the 10th of May. And uh, they may be, maybe, uh, replaced by the Chechen forces. Uh, according to Ramzam Kadyrov, the leader of the Chechen Republic, said that they are ready to replace the Wagner forces. Uh, uh, fighting is reported towards Ivaniske uh, on the 5th of May, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Shelling is reported at Ivaniske on, on the 4th and on the 5th. The shelling also reported at the southwest of Bakhmut, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. This, uh, yeah, that's on the 4th. Uh, fighting is reported uh, 
at the highway near Kromove on the 5th of May. Uh, according to the chatters or the rumors coming from the pro-Russian sources, the fighting over at Kromove is extremely fierce. So, uh, but we do see very fierce fighting at Kromove for many, many times already. So that is not a sign that the Ukrainian lines may actually fall. So this is not new. Uh, this is definitely not new. Fighting, uh, moving further out, uh, we have a shelling reported at a Kalinina on the 5th and uh, at, at Khrykhorivka, both information coming from, from the Russian Defense Ministry. At Bodanivka, the Ukrainians actually launched a counter-attack on the 3rd along at uh, Khrykhorivka as well. Both information coming on the 3rd, uh, information from the Russian Defense Ministry. And uh, the Russians took the initiative on the next day. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry said the Russians are the one attacking on the 4th uh, towards Bodanivka and Khrykhorivka. According to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, the Ukrainian uh, the one at Khrykhorivka is actually or Grigorivka is actually on the fifth of May. Uh, on the fourth of May, uh, the fighting was actually reported towards Makove. So Makove is actually uh, let me move out this direction. So they are saying that the Russians are attacking this direction towards Makove. Uh, but of course, this is definitely just talking about fighting near Khrykhorivka or rather in the north eastern part of Krykhorivka and uh, information coming from Bremenlin uh, the pro-Russian source are saying that the Russians are attacking towards Mikivka and uh, this is uh, one of the latest information and uh, don't take this too seriously I don't think this is uh, something very important or very serious because the Ukrainians are making a very strong uh, counter-attack uh, within the Bakhmut front in this area here, I don't think the Russians will be busy, uh, will busy themselves uh, attacking northward in this direction. It uh, feels like um, running away from in the opposite direction. And uh, so moving on to the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, uh, Remelin uh, 21, uh, the pro-Russian source reported uh, fighting at Rostolivka and Vesely. Basically, it's actually talking about the whole line. The Russians are attacking uh, in this direction. Um, I don't think it's much. There's fighting reported southwest of Sperney, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So, uh, wrong color. The Russians are attacking in the southwest of Sperney. So this is probably coming from the south. Yeah. So maybe they want to you know cut the defense route, so force the Ukrainians to actually go into the withdrawal. Uh, maybe that's what what they are trying to do. Not sure. And uh, moving into the uh, further up uh, at Bilohorivka, there is a Ukrainian uh, Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian source, Joe located Ukrainian forces over at the filtration sta station, which is actually here. Uh, the Ukrainians have retook this position, and uh, otherwise the the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Surya maps reported the Russians are attacking at Bilohorivka on the 3rd and uh, on the 4th, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. And uh, fighting, uh, shelling is reported at Serebryanka on the 4th and on the 5th, and uh, that's all from the Sivas front. Moving into the Crimea front, uh, there is no ground offensive, uh, not much to talk about. There is only shelling reported at Dibrova on the 3rd and the 4th. Uh, shelling reported at Toske on the 5th, at, at Termi on the 4th, and uh, at Nevsky on the 3rd, 4th, and on the 5th. Uh, there is some fighting reported by Raiba, uh, it's posi positional, uh, on the eastern part of uh, Nevsky in the valley region as well as at uh, Kievka. Both information is from Raiba. So it's like this and like this, but it's positional. So this arrow is actually not that big. So uh, moving away from the Crimea front into the Sviatovay front. At the Sviatovay front, uh, the Ukrainians uh, continue to be doing their probing uh, as per usual. Uh, Shelling is reported as Temekivka while the Ukrainians are actually uh, probing on the next day according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, there is also shelling reported at Novoselitsky on the 4th. Ukrainians attack at uh, Beristovy on the 5th. Um, and then... Oops. Oops. Uh, and then uh, there is shelling reported at Kramalne on the 5th. And uh, the Ukrainians continue their probing in the area of uh, Kaislivka, Ivanivska, and uh, Stimkovka on the 4th and on the 5th. Shelling is reported at Ivanivska on the 5th. Shelling is also reported near... Uh, uh, on the 4th, the Asinkivka, the Ukrainians continue their attack uh, in this area here. 
on the fourth and on the fifth. Uh, they are really determined to try to capture uh, this area here. Uh, so far, no success just yet, uh, especially because we do have information of uh, uh, Lehman Pershi being entrenched by the Russian forces. Uh, this one since February, early February. And um, the shelling continues to be uh, reported at Vorishna and uh, Novo Limbs, Novo Limbs. Uh, calling and also at Kayamka. And uh, there is information uh, from Raiba saying that the Ukrainians are actually preparing uh, boats to cross the Oski River. So, and then there is some kind of uh, evacuation of uh, civilians from Rekuduk, which is actually here. Oops. Which is actually here. This Rekuduk. So, uh, they are ev evacuating Ukrainians from this position, which is kind of uh, well specific, I guess. Uh, so, so the, the threat of a Ukrainian crossing over the Oskir River remains uh, whilst the Ukrainians continue to attack at Sinkivka and also probing the lines uh, all across the Kupiang and Svetovay front. And uh, yeah, that's the summary for the day of uh, 434th to 436th for the 3rd to the 5th of May. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next update.